All right. So around Ranger World, big issue, big topic of conversation right now. Obviously, the Capococco injury on Monday against the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, the Rangers bringing up Johnny Brzezinski uh, to fill that role right now. One for Kako. Obviously, this is a contract year for him. Um, many would say he obviously hasn't shown much offensively throughout his first few years in the NHL. Just um, how obviously it's not a season ending injury, uh, as reported by the team, but uh, for Kako, how how tough is this for him to get injured at this moment? It's a debilitating injury for him personally, professionally, for the team. It's a tough spot because he has not been off to a good start. He hasn't performed the way he wants to perform, especially in a contract year. And, and now we don't know how long he's going to be out, but we know it's going to be long term. So let, let's just say he's out till February. January, February, and I'm just speculating. I don't know. So that gives him the opportunity to come back and make a name for himself again, but he's coming off of a major injury. So it's a real tough spot for Kako. The Rangers are going to go on without him. The NHL goes on without guys when they're hurt. You know, that happens. And if the Rangers go on without Kako and they continue to play the way that they're capable of playing and the way they have for the first quarter of this season, honestly, they might look at it and say, is this guy now expendable, right? I mean, where, where are we at here? Or they could look at it and say, we know the ability is there. We know the talent's there, but you know what? He's coming off of an injury plague season. He didn't put up numbers. We can get him on the cheap in his next deal, right? I mean, so there's there are those things that factor in, but this is a debilitating injury for Kako. He was already off to a tough start. Tough start. Uh, he is a guy driven by confidence, and when he doesn't have it, his game falls apart. And we have seen that with him. And he also is a, he thinks too much. I think Kako, he, he thinks about his position in the lineup. He thinks about his position within the coach, you know, what the coaching staff thinks about him. I think that's plagued him actually for parts of this, you know, his career. And this is not going to help, but maybe he comes back stronger and better. And he, if it's not the season ending, as they say, he will get an opportunity again. Well, for the time being, in his absence, the Rangers have Johnny Brzezinski in that right wing spot. Is he that long term fix for this team, or do you feel like they need to go out and and obviously now Patrick Kane's off the board, but go out and, and fix that right wing position? Well, I mean, here's the thing: Philip Hedo's going to come back at some point, right? And, and so, when Philip Hedo comes back at some point, you have other you have options to move guys around, move guys up or down in the lineup. Um, it gives you a, a surplus of centers, but it's the position you'd rather have a surplus in rather than a surplus of right wings or a surplus of left wings and guys that can't play the middle centers can usually move and bounce around. So that's a good thing for them. The cap space isn't really going to be there for them. I mean, it, it's, I understand they have a couple of guys here on long-term injured reserve. They've already used some of the LTIR money because of the goaltending situation when it was just out and they had to bring up the Ming and all that. And so I don't know that they're going to be able to have the cap space to go out and make any significant move. I also don't know that they're going to have the need to go out and make any significant move. Sometimes we overlook, we, we, we overlook what's right in front of us. We'll see where this team is at come February because we don't know right now, but if from all indications of what I see, I see a team that's got chemistry that plays well together. It's going to insert eventually a guy who is a very important piece in Philip Hedl into their lineup. And I would let that ride for a while without even considering making any other moves. Yeah. Actually you bring up a, a really good point and something I've been thinking about as well. If something's going so well as it has been for the Rangers, you know, is there a need to add at the, uh, at the trade deadline? If, if you got a team that, that vibes really well together and, you know, plays really well together. Yeah, I, I think that happens all the time, and and because it's the trade deadline and it's the flashy thing, and people want to look at that. And I mean, we're talking trade deadline; it's still three plus months away. I mean, we got to go through December, January, and February before we're there. So a lot can happen between now and then. But if you got something going right, don't look to change it. Why fix what's not broken? And this team right now, as we speak, they're what sixteen four and one. They have not lost back-to-back -back games. They're incredible so far at self-correcting, right? I mean, they didn't play well against the Buffalo Sabres on Monday and lose 5-1. What do they do? They come back with a strong performance, get 41, I think, shots on goal, 40 or 41 shots on goal against the Red Wings, control the pace of that game, control that game, and, and end up winning it in the end because they earned it, you know? And, and that was the thing. 
that they did against the Red Wings. They they were down, but they came back because they earned it. And they're very good at self-correcting. They have chemistry. They have deep pairs that work when healthy. Uh, they have lines that seem to work. Lafreniere is playing out of his mind right now. So is Panarin. That line, that that chemistry is terrific. Um, I wouldn't fix if nothing's broken. Why why even look to fix it right now? 